Hello plant lovers, it is Matthew in Melbourne. Thank you very much for finding me. If you are new here, I grow cold, cool, intermediate orchids here in Melbourne, Australia without any grow lights or greenhouses or humidifiers, just me and them either inside or outside or not at all. So plant lovers, if that sounds like your bag, do hit subscribe. I post every week on a Friday. I am a complete amateur figuring out how things grow for me. Not necessarily the best way or the right way or the only way, but ways that work for me. And one of the things I found was it's quite hard to find information about your specific environment. So I kind of decided to make videos to make sense of it all for myself. So hopefully plant lovers, it will be of some use to you. And today, you might think, what are those dead leaves, Matthew? Well, what these are, and if I can hold one up without all the soil going everywhere, these are pleony bulbs. And ah, yes, pleonies, goodness me, what an arc. Now, I've made many videos about pleonies. This is perhaps my fourth year of growing them. And last year, I made a video with Jane Tonkin, who is a professional pleony grower here in Melbourne. And I'll link that video. And she went through the process of her propagation and growing of pleonies. She had just tubs of them all in bloom, and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. So... Armed with that knowledge, I thought, okay, I will firstly, of course, buy more Pliony bulbs from Jane. As it is winter, they're all dormant, so now is the time to be buying them here in Australia. Um, it's actually not winter, it's autumn, but anyway, you know what I mean. It's that period of time when they should have lost their leaves, and it's easy to transport the bulbs, easy to ship them through the mail. So in Australia, it is certainly time to buy your Pliony bulbs and pot them. And I thought, okay, plant lovers, let's go through potting them again. And maybe just refresh what I've learned and unlearned <laughs> from some of my failures. So to recap, I bought my first pleonies and thought that the best thing you should do with the bulbs is keep them incredibly dry over winter. Um, all the information I had seen said, keep them dry, keep them dry. Now I interpreted that as meaning keep them dry, i.e. no water as you would say, um, Mediterranean bulbs or South African bulbs, you know, very, very dry winter, and then you pop them in spring and ping, they all come to life. As you would say, tulips, if you live tulips. Anyway, what I discovered is, of course, that that doesn't work, that your bulbs become completely desiccated, dry up and die. So I lost my first batch. Okay, the next year I realized, all right, well, we need to not do that. So the opposite of that is keeping them moist-ish. So that worked a little bit. And then I, of course, lost some to rot because I kept them too moist. <sighs> then I went and saw Jane at her nursery, which is out in the Dandenong Mountains. So to the east of Melbourne City. And it is slightly cooler. So she's in the mountains in a valley. So she does get cooler winter nighttime minimums and not as hot in summer. And Jane keeps her peonies in the pots that they're in. They're under shade cloth, but they're still exposed to the rain on winter. So she basically doesn't protect them at all. I thought, aha, I'm just going to copy her. She also gave me some great tips around how to mix um, the potting mix that you need to pot them in. So armed with all this information, I'm going to show you how I went with the last batch, which I made a video about potting. They were beautiful white peonies. Didn't do too badly, but hmm, there were some issues with some other ones. And then we're going to pop them up and we're going to pop the new ones, which I bought. So I'll show you what those are in a minute. But before we get into potting, what I might just do is swing the camera around and just show you these plants, these bulbs, which were the white, the Pliny alba that I grew and flowered last season and did look absolutely amazing, as you can see from the images. So I'll swing the camera around and we'll just talk through these before we get on to the next bit. OK, plant lovers, so here we have those alba, Pliny alba bulbs that bloomed for me last year. So what you can see here, this is the old bulb that bloomed and it is rotting, as you can see. That is not a problem. Here we have another one that bloomed for me last year. So this is the natural life cycle. Once these bulbs have flowered, they will rot and die away. And what they do, which you can see perfectly here, is produce a new bulb right next to it, like that. So what we do is actually separate the old bulb and throw it away because it is useless and it is not going to regenerate and it's going to rot like this one. 
and we plot up a new one. So there we have the life cycle. And as you can see, we've got roots already coming out of the new bulb and the old one is pretty much dead and done. So what we might just do is separate that, as you can see, there we go. There's our old bulb, which we'll throw away. And there is our new bulb, which we're going to plant. And I'm also going to trim off the old leaves as they are now going into dormancy and it's just going to be easier to manage them. So I'm just going to snip this off like that. Ta -da! So that's that one ready for growth. So what we'll get now is new leaves and another year of fattening up this bulb and then that should be ready to bloom. Now here's another one. So we have the dead bulb that bloomed which we can very gently just separate like that and throw away. And what you might be able to see on this one is that little nib there. Now that might well be a flower bud. Anyway, so you see we have an old leaf on this one. So I am going to trim that off. And there we are, another bulb ready for potting. Now this bulb, this is the one that flowered. And here we can see it's produced two new bulbs this year, this one and this one. This bulb is a little more mature. This one is very, very fresh. So, and this bulb is still quite green. My feeling is it might still be giving um, food and nutrients to this one. So I'm actually not gonna throw that one away as it's still green. It's not gonna flower, but I feel it might still be giving food to that one. But again, the leaves are scabby. I will trim these off. Trim, trim. This one, pretty similar. So you can see here quite clearly how that bulb has really rotted away. So one of the issues though, of course, is that you can rot the main bulb. So I'm really, really happy <laughs> that this year I haven't. So here we have our new bulb. So this is the one that may well flower this season or next. So they do take a couple of years to mature. I'll just remove some of that detritus around those. There's our new juicy bulb. Now, the other thing that peonies do is produce these things called bulbils, which are literally little baby bulblets, as you can see. And these form around the, the side of the plant. And so these are very easy to get lost in the mix when you're pulling out your old bulb. So just keep an eye on them. So these will take a couple of years, obviously, to fatten up and get to this size. But these are going to be new viable plants. So do plant these when you're planting the rest of your bulbs and keep your eye out for them. Okay, now these are the mixed bag <laughs> of the various uh, pink ones that I had from previous seasons. So we see we've got some that are doing really well and they've fattened up. And here we've got a pretty classic situation of the one that bloomed has produced new bulbs, which is great. I have got, can you see that bulbil coming out of this little bulb here? Um, a little bulbil here which produced a leaf for me. So this is going to um, fatten up again this growing season. And another bulb here. So, oh, and that one looks like it may have a bit of rot. Yes, it does. There you go. So these ones, plant lovers, I didn't fare so well with. I did, yes, keep them too moist. So even in the warmest summer days, Sometimes they just got too moist and a lot of them rotted. Anyway, so that's the only survivors I've got from those pinky ones. However, the white ones over here did much better. So we win some, we lose some. So one of the great things about growing orchids is that you just learn, 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 learn. And you particularly learn by meeting experts who know what they're doing. So I was thrilled that Jane took the time to explain to me how she grows her um, pleonies. And so it is, as I said, pleony time right now. And these are the two varieties that I bought from her this season. So this one is the most amazing apricot, which was in the film, and I'll drop in the footage of it, just stunning. And it's called Pleony Shantung Canberra. And for those of you not in Australia, Canberra is the capital of Australia. So a stunning, stunning plant. As you can see though, plant lovers, $40 a bulb, not super cheap. I really... <laughs> 
don't want to rot or kill this. I feel I'm getting there though. So one of the things is just the whole moisture thing. Um, but we'll get to that because a lot of that is to do with the mixture that you use to pop them in. Anyway, the other one I've bought is Pliny Tong Gariro. I don't quite know how to pronounce that one. There we go. So this one is a beautiful magenta with a beautifully uh, coloured lip. The, the colours probably faded a little bit on that photograph. Anyway, these were a little less expensive at $10 a bulb. Which brings us to the point of where do you find peonies? And I have to say in Australia, it's really, really difficult. You can sometimes find them in bloom in specialist garden centres and nurseries. Um, but the best time to buy them if you can't buy them physically is in the dormancy period, which is now. And there are two places that I know in Australia that sell them. One is Jane Tonkin, and I'll put her links below. And I made that film with her earlier in the year. And the other is a nursery called White House, which is in Victoria, here near where I am. And I'll also link those guys below. So they also sell peony bulbs, but they are the only two. There might be others, I just haven't searched enough. So don't think that they're the only sources. Do you have good Google around? Um, but for me, they're the only two places I found that I have bought peony bulbs from. The white ones that I bought last season actually came from a Facebook marketplace orchid group. So that is, I know, <sighs> Facebook is, you know, <sighs> tricky. Let's just say tricky. You're not everyone wants to engage. But um, if you are on Facebook marketplace, it's a great place to try and find plenty bulbs. So just have a little search in winter when they're dormant. OK, so once again, I'm going to swing the camera around and I'll just talk through the potting mix that I've decided to use this year based on Jane's intel from the last film I made with her. OK, let's talk potting medium. Now, peonies are often called ground orchids. You can then therefore guess they are terrestrials. So Jane's potting mix was a mix of a compost with a fertilizer and with some something that sort of aerates and drains the material. My lesson has been that my potting mix was just too water retentive and my bowls were rotting too easily. So I need it to be free draining, but also moisture retaining. So I've gone a little bit off piece and I've also included some out of the bag orchid mix. So this is a sort of a bark based mix. It's just going to lighten and aerate the mix with perlite. I've also then got some um, manure based fertilizer and some regular compost. And I'm also going to use quite a reasonable amount of a slow release fertilizer. This releases over six months, it's heat activated. So remember, if you get a sort of burst of warm weather in spring, it is gonna release all the nutrients. And so you might not actually get six months, which means you might have to fertilize again, topically throughout the season. But for these, I would also use a liquid fertilizer as we progress. So I am just going to mix this like good pastry into a really delicious, nutritious, free draining mix. There we are. And some of the peony species, when you see pictures of them growing in their natural habitat, um, you see that they're often sort of growing in mossy lumps in amongst all of that material in crevices, in the base of trees, etc., etc. So plenty of organic material, but very free draining. And that is the key. So they are getting water when they're in their dormant period, but it's draining quite quickly. OK, there we go. There is my mix, which I am quite happy with now. Free draining, super nutritious. Loving that. All right, onto the pots. I'm putting my white ones back in the pot that they were in. So I have got a crock to cover the, the base there just to assist with drainage. Now, some of these, of course, might not be blooming size, so I might not get the display that I got last year. One of the things about buying bulbs is that the grower has grown them on to flowering size. So you know you're going to get an immediate show from bulbs that you buy just because the grower has produced them thus. However, with your own bulbs, obviously they're at different points of their life cycle. So some of these, well, particularly that one, <laughs> are going to be too small to bloom. Some of these, though, I think are blooming size, others not. So we might not get as many flowers this year, but we've begun that regenerative cycle of getting more bulbs from our existing ones. So I'm not that concerned if I don't get a pot full of flowers. But what I do want in spring after the flowering season is a pot full of very healthy leaves. So let's pop them up. 
There we are, putting our delicious cake mix in there. Now, just before I go any further, I'm going to add my slow release fertilizer. And these plants are quite heavy feeders, so I'm going to be putting in a lot more than I normally would. Then we'll just cover that with a bit more of our magic mix. And then we are just going to place our bulbs on the surface. There we go. And then just a gentle covering. So you don't want the bulb to be completely buried. We just sort of want them poking out the surface of the mix. Okay, so that's this year's regrowth from me. They're my own bulbs. So they look slightly different to the bulbs we're going to plant, but we'll get onto these next. So what I've used is an out of the bag um, potting mix, which has a thing called dynamic lifter, which is lots of, sort of nutrients. I then also use an out of the bag, well rotted animal manure. So you can use horse poo, cow poo, whatever it is, uh, chickens. So usually most hardware stores are going to have pre-bagged, uh, well-rotted animal manure, which is going to be about one third of the total mix. Okay, let's do our pink ones first. So I've got my pots, shallow terracotta pots with a crock in the bottom to stop the medium really falling out the bottom and assist in drainage. So let's just see what these look like out of the bag. Okay, there we are. So they are packed in peat, and there we go. Look, oops, there's quite a happy root. Let's get that out. There we are. So there we have our bulbs. Now, when you're buying them in this manner uh, from a supplier, they are ready to bloom. So what you must be super careful of is there will be a flower point somewhere, which I think is this. So just be really careful when you're handling them that you don't knock that bud, because if you do, you're done. Okay, so look at the size of those bulbs as well. This is because <laughs> Jane jokes that she's a feeder. So there is lots of nutrient in her potting mix. Okay, there's one. There's two, look at that bulb, goodness me. Just to shake off some of the excess, but look at the size of that. Fabulous. And there's our third bulb. Gorgeous. And look at the size of them. All right, let's pop these up. And now I am never one to waste anything. So in fact, I always just throw in the peat that they came with into my potting mix. There we are. Give that a bit of a mix in. So in we go. In with our slow release fertilizer, more than you would normally use for other orchids. You see, these roots are actually old roots. The bulb's going to produce new ones. So you can perhaps see on that one there, you can see how the sheath is separating and the vellum is visible inside. And on this one here, you can see the same thing there. So these are old roots. We don't need to really worry about them. And in fact, I'm going to trim them off as they're a bit in the way. There we are. Okay, and then we put our bulb so that about a third of it is gonna be beneath the soil level. And likewise with this one, and we'll trim those old roots off. And this one, there we are. And then we'll just do a little bit of a backfill. There we go. Perfect. Next thing, of course, write our labels. Always a good idea to keep on top of the variety that you've got. Okay, plant lovers, here we are, finished. So these are the things that I have learned as I've been going, particularly with the, the help of seeing how Jane grows hers. So when you buy your peony bulbs, they are going to be blooming size. 
which are the ones that we just potted. So really large bulb, it will bloom when you plant it, and then that bulb will die. But before it dies, it will produce lots of offsets. And those are the bulbs that are gonna give you your next season's flowering. Now, those bulbs can take a couple of years to get to mature flowering size. So the next year, you might not get the same display of blooms that you did the first year because you, you're guaranteed really the bulbs you bought are flowering size if you're buying them from a reputable seller. So these ones of mine, the white ones, I'm not sure. I think some of them might be flowering size, but I think some of them might need another year of growth before we get blooms from them. But each year they are gonna produce offsets or bulb bills. So as long as you've kind of got bulbs at each step of the way over a sort of a three year period, you should get flowers every season. Obviously the more bulbs you have, the more chance you're gonna get of flowers every season. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with the white ones. I feel I've got a very good crop of bulbs. I've basically got the same number of bulbs as I had last year when I planted them, so that's great. Now, the um, the pink flowering ones that I had from a few years ago, you're gonna be horrified. I've potted them in plastic. Why? <sighs> because this is more of a nursery pot. These, a lot of these are bulbils and tiny bulbs, so they're gonna take a couple of years to grow on. So there they are, we'll see if any of them bloom. But with these, my focus is just to grow them on and fatten up those bulbs to get them into a healthy state to bloom, but also to produce lots of offsets for me. So this is a nursery pot, forgive the plastic. So once you've potted them, a gentle water in, but as I have learned, the important thing is, particularly in winter when they're dormant, of course, don't overwater them, but don't let the medium dry out. Now that is tricky. I can attest to that. I have both desiccated them through not watering them enough and rotted them through overwatering, even though I felt I wasn't and the ambient temperature is quite warm. Ah, <sighs> so it's tricky, it's tricky, but just kind of figure your own way out. Make sure that your medium is free draining. Make sure the pot's in a position where water can flow out underneath. They're not sitting in saucers or trays so that it's gonna drain as quickly as possible. Terracotta will evaporate faster than plastic, so you're more likely to keep the medium dry in terracotta. Anyway, I feel that I'm learning my lessons, but let's see. So what I will show you uh, in spring is when these two bloom, which would be fantastic, and then in autumn, early winter next year, we might unearth these and just see how we've gone with the producing of the new bulbs. And I'll also see what happens with these white ones next year. So there we are, Pleonies. I feel I am getting my head around it. Even when you think you have, you often haven't, because I did manage to rot a whole <laughs> swathe of them this year. But anyway, we're all here to learn. It's a learning process. No one's perfect. Anyway, I'm very excited about these from Jane Tonkin. I'll link her below, as I said. If you're outside of Australia, can't help you as to where you can get bulbs from. But I will also just say that Australian um, growers can't ship internationally. So if you're in the States or Europe or somewhere else in the world, there's no point going to the two suppliers I've listed because they won't be able to ship internationally, unfortunately. But I'm pretty sure both in Britain and in North America and other parts of the world, you should be able to, with a little bit of searching, find someone who is a grower of these bulbs and who can ship them to you. Jane's point, of course, is that they're a woodland bulb. She treats them as sort of woodland ephemeral. So particularly in North America, that is a type of plant that's very common. So in terms of growing and availability, hopefully there should be lots of peony grows over there that you can find some uh, great cultivars of. Anyway, plant lovers, there is my early autumn rambling for you, potting on peonies, learning as we go, but that's the whole point of this channel, figuring things out and sharing as we go. Peonies are tricky. It's easy to get them to bloom when you buy the pot. That's quite simple because you don't water them too much. They flower, ta-da. What is tricky is what comes next. Anyway, hopefully we'll figure our way through that maze. Plant lovers, thank you very much for finding me. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, do hit like and subscribe. I post every Friday and I look forward to seeing you next week with whatever continuing adventure it might be. But until then, take care. I'll see you next week.